Ahem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, days and gays. This is The Real Pineapple, and this is your humble host, Hunter, here. Hope you're having a great night, day, weekend, whenever you're checking this out. I've got a review for what is going to be a potential Oscar contender in uh, Poor Things, which is directed by uh, Yorgos uh, Lanthimos, who you know from doing The Killing of a Sacred Deer, which I might review before the Oscars. Uh, we'll see. But uh, Killing of a Sacred Deer, uh, Dogtooth, uh, also did The Lobster, which I have... I need to re-review the lobster. I, I need to review the lobster. Lobster's great. And, of course, he also uh, directed The Favorite. Uh, this film, of course, stars the brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Emma Stone, who I will get to in a moment, uh, Willem Dafoe, uh, Remy Yosef, uh, and um, uh, Mark Ruffalo. So, okay. Uh, let me just jump in here. I love Emma Stone. I have been a fan of Emma Stone's uh, for years. I think, like a lot of us, um, I think a lot of people really understood how brilliant she was after we saw Super Bad, and we we're kind of like, "Oh shit!" Like, hopefully, this girl can, you know, keep it going. And then she does uh, the uh, the House Bunny, which she's uh, really funny in. And then, of course, she becomes Wichita in uh, Zombieland. And I think from there, it's it's just, you know, really hit after hit. You know, you get the easy A after that. You get Crazy Stupid Love. Um, despite my feelings about the film overall, she is great in the help. Um, I thought she was actually a really good Gwen Stacy for, um, for what she um, was given. And um, just because I'm a huge fan of the game. Uh, she's Amanda and Sleeping Dogs. I fucking love Sleeping Dogs. If you have not played Sleeping Dogs or do not own it, buy it. Don't even question me. It fucking rules. Sleeping Dogs is a great fucking game. But then she goes ahead and she does some really underrated stuff. Like, I think she's actually really good in uh, Gangster Squad. I think she's amazing in The Croods. Uh, not everyone can be a great uh, voice actor or actress, and I think she's uh, amazing. Um, of course, Birdman. Um, you know, um... I will forever be a fan of hers for her cameo as a uh, Claudia Cantrell in Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping. That was such a oh my god, Emma Stone did this. I appreciate so much that she's willing to not take herself seriously. Um I just I adore the woman. I think she's incredibly talented. All those things listed and notice I didn't mention uh La La Land. <laughs> but um and then I got in even mentioned Corella because she's great in Corella. With all that said, this might be the performance of her career. This might be the best Emma Stone's ever been. Because I was really, I was really sitting back thinking about it, like, man, do I like her more in EZA? I do love her in EZA. That Tom Cruise joke is still <laughs> the way she delivers that uh, with Amanda Bynes. It's, it's. There's so much venom in it. I. Uh, and so much sass i i love her i love her in that but this might be the best performance of her career um i reserve the right to change that opinion but just really thinking about it i don't know if she's ever dove head first into something with reckless abandon and i mean that as a compliment in the way that she did this and i think you need a director like uh uh like yorgos to go ahead and tell you like it's gonna be okay like i got you and the fact that she was just like, I got it, let's go. Um, I love her for that. I, I genuinely love the fact that she took this project and was willing to fully commit to the insanity of it. Because, let's be clear, this movie is nuts. And I'm going to dance around uh, plot points as much as I can. Uh, there will be some mild spoilers per usual. But um, where this movie goes, and I, and I mean this as a compliment... I just kept thinking, I can't believe we're going here. There, there's, there is very little rhyme or reason in that sense where you just are watching it. You feel like you're on this roller coaster in the best way. Everything that occurs, I think it makes total sense. But it's just such a wild ride that I kept, I was sitting there going, I don't know what you're going to give me. And I'm so excited that I don't know where you're going. So just right out of the gate, the opening shot in this movie, fucking gorgeous. Oh my god, it is absolutely one of my favorite opening shots uh, in the film. I don't even want, I'm not even going to spoil what the opening shot is. That's how much I love it, and I want you to experience it for yourself. But uh, jumping into the actual plot here, Willem Dafoe, 
uh, plays Dr. Goodwin Baxter. You, of course, know Defoe uh, from Aquaman, which he's, <laughs> he's, he's fun in Aquaman. Uh, At Eternity's Gate, The Lighthouse, The Florida Project, uh, Spider-Man, um, Asteroid City, which he's great in, uh, The Card Counter, which he's great in, The French Dispatch. Um, yeah, I mean, the, guy, the guy's been in so much fucking great shit. Uh, l- love him, love him. Um, he plays Dr. G- uh, Goodwin Baxter, who's basically, you know, he's a mad scientist. And so uh, he goes ahead and brings uh, Emma Stone's Bella Baxter uh, to life through uh, questionable means, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll simply say. Um, but, there, but this movie from Jump kind of lets you know that you're in a completely different world and shit is going to be weird. And honestly, for, for the better, um, uh, the doctor pretty much out the gate uh, burps a bubble. And the reason for why he burps a bubble is one of those things you go, oh man, okay, we're going here. Okay, good, good to know. Um, one thing I really love about the movie is, this, is the uh, pacing. So right out the gate, uh, Dr. Baxter goes ahead and recruits uh, uh, Rami uh, Yosef's uh, Max McCandles. I love the names in this movie too. Like they're 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 weird but whimsical at the same time. Like I I, I really I really love the names in here. Um, Rami, you know uh, from Mr. Robot, um, from his uh, his uh, stand up uh, his TV special, uh, Rami Yosef Feelings. Um, if you have not seen his TV show that's on Hulu, uh, Rami, please watch it. That show is incredibly awesome and really went under the radar. I might actually end up reviewing that uh, here before uh, before the end of the year, but uh, an incredibly underrated show. Check that out, please. But um, I'm really happy for him just as an actor because, you know, he's still young uh, in his uh, in his career, but he's he's acting alongside someone like Willem Dafoe and is, is right there with him. It, it's so cool to see people who, you know, are, are on the, uh, are on the come up, uh, going ahead and bringing it with people who are already established and Dafoe gives as well as he gets. And it's really cool to see how they, uh, bounce off each other. He, he very early on, um, asks him like, do you believe in God? And he kind of goes, what? And he's like, uh, the deity or are you talking about yourself he's like i'm talking about myself and like <laughs> like i'm paraphrasing but that's a really fun exchange between the two of them very early on that i really liked um i know it's not politically correct to say but there is a use um uh the foe drops to r word and the way he drops it i i laughed hard y'all i i won't even lie but the way he says it in, in the context he said it it's so fucked, and it just caught me so off guard. I was like, whoa, what the fuck, man? And that's kind of what I love about Dr. Baxter in general, is that his his goal is to create life, and he doesn't give a fuck who he pisses off. He doesn't care about being politically correct at all. He is laser-focused on this one fucking thing. That is all he cares about. That is his end goal, is Bella. And so... As Bella grows up and we see her, you know, start to become her own person, that's where the juxtaposition comes in between what uh, what Doctor Baxter wants and what Emma uh, or what uh, Bella wants. And the way that Emma just does these little things, like at first she's walking very, you know, very clumsily, but you know her stance starts to uh, starts to uh, straighten uh, as she ages, and just these these little mannerisms as far as her just being able to adapt to the world. Even the way she walks up steps uh, changes as she gets more confident and she learns more about the world around her. It's these little things that I just kept sitting back going, I don't know how much of that is uh, Yorgos directing her. I don't know how much is her just doing this because she's a fucking pro, but I'll give them both credit because I just kept finding these little differences in her mannerisms and the way that she's playing Bella as she evolves that I just went she's fucking amazing and I just and I kept saying that every scene she was in I was like she's fucking amazing like she's fucking crushing this and it, it, it's it's really a, a sight to behold how great Emma Stone is in this and when you get her and Defoe 
going back and forth with, with each other again two fucking pros uh you just you you can tell how much fun they're having but how committed they are to the material um this is uh written by uh tony mcnamara uh tony mcnamara you know from writing uh the rage in placid lake uh he went ahead and wrote the favorite and he was the uh, uh writer and creator on uh, the great which if you have not seen the great you definitely should check that out it's fucking wonderful he also wrote Corella, so um, there you go. Um, the other writer on this was uh, Alistair Gray, um, um, who unfortunately has passed. Uh, Four Things was the last thing uh, that they uh, that they contributed on, and what a what a film to go out on. Um, this this dialogue from start to finish, I just found it to be sparkling. I found it to be hilarious. I found myself engaged, and really, it gave me a lot to chew on after uh, the credits had rolled and I really just kind of sat back and went, huh, okay, I'm going to need to, I'm going to need to think on, on a lot of this. Um, so I'm going to sound, I, I don't even know how this will sound, but I love the fact this is a hard R. Like, I, I think that movies almost at some points, just because they drop the F word maybe three times, you know, they get the R rating just because of that. But it's not a hard R. This is a hard, hard R-rated movie. Um, there are multiple sex scenes here with Emma Stone. Um, she does full frontal at a point, which I was just I was genuinely shocked by. Uh, there are, there are boobs in this movie. There are dicks in this movie. There are butts in this movie. There is a lot of cussing. There's a lot of violence. Like it is a hard R movie. There's a point early on where <laughs> where Bella. And goes up to his body and just stabbing the eye and she just goes like squish 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 and she's like laughing while she does it and i was just sitting there going holy shit like we're fuck we're 10 minutes in like what is <laughs> like what is going on and and that's mild for where this movie for where this movie goes it's 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 fucking insane in the best way and i just kept finding myself going okay you're ramping up kind of everything in this and yet it feel it doesn't feel like it's being done just for the sake of an r rating it feels like it's being done in the sake of servicing the story which is exactly how something like this should come across um this isn't a spoiler but there is this camera shot in particular uh, particular where bella runs uh outside and the way that the camera goes ahead and distorts its view it's such a clever shot and i just went I I love this the directing in this. Oh my god, there, there's so much I could break down, but that that is one shot I wanted to go ahead and uh and and particularly uh shout out. Um, I really love the way that um Baxter uh, Doctor Baxter is talking to Max about Bella, and he kind of just goes, "Well, you know, she's a woman. You're a guy, like." If you wanna, if you guys wanna get married, that's super cool. But you can never leave here, and without spoiling, without going past that, that's where Bella's journey really begins, and she ends up um, in the company of Mark Ruffalo's Duncan Winderburn, which is goddamn, that's a great poor name too. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't feel like I need to bring up Mark Ruffalo being the Hulk, but I will. But you know him. Of course, from the kids are all right. Uh, Foxcatcher, which if you haven't seen Foxcatcher, holy shit! Um, and then Spotlight, which um, was my favorite film of that year. I fucking love Spotlight. Um, also very underrated. I know this much is true. Um, if you haven't seen that and, or Dark Waters, watch both of those. Fucking fantastic. But Ruffalo is playing a playboy in this movie, and it's not something. Uh, it's not something that Ruffalo is. Uh, associated with even though i know several friends of mine who say he gets off daddy vibes which he he does let's be real but uh i love rough load this he is the way that bella frustrates him by some of the things she does um he's literally literally and figuratively at points pulling his hair out and he's just so frustrated by her but he's so fascinated by her and it's it's so interesting and fucked up and fun how they play the relationship and things that bella learns about the world 
because of him and also because of the way he acts. Like it's really, it's really quite fascinating the way their relationship evolves. Um, I want to shout him out just because I think he did a great job um, hosting the Golden Globes. Um, I thought his uh, stand up special, um, um, uh, Ralph Fennell, I thought was fucking incredible. Um, and the fact that um, I, I just think he's a genius. And I think the Carmichael show was horribly, horribly unfairly underrated. Um, I got to shout out Gerard Carmichael here. Um, he has a small part in this movie, and I don't want to spoil what it is, but him and Bella have this conversation about humanity, and it's one of those scenes that I went five years from now, I'm going to still be bringing that scene up. The way that they play off each other in the actual dialogue and conversation they have about humanity is one of those things where I just went, that is so profound, and I love that this conversation exists within the constructs of this movie and that's going to be something that people go go back to and that people are really going to appreciate um i i love the fact that he's in this movie and every scene he's in he knocks it out of the fucking park i was so happy for him to be in something like this that'll hopefully get more eyes on him and give him give him money to do whatever the fuck he wants um nbc horribly handled the carmichael show didn't give it nearly the respect it deserved and this brother is special this this young man is special and he deserves he deserves his shine so i'm really happy that he was able to be in this movie and got to show out uh the way he did um a couple lines of dialogue i am going to share this isn't spoilerish but just a few lines that i went wow um i'm a eunuch and can't fuck her let us touch each other's genital pieces um you have you, uh, do you have the bladder of a five year old? Um, that's it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drop <laughs> I'm just gonna drop those lines. Um, and it gets more insane from there. Um, where this movie ends up. So there is a subplot that this movie brings in that I don't think is super fleshed out, but I get why it's there, and I and I'll just leave it at that. I think once you see it, you'll understand. But where this film ends up and where it ends up going, I just went, I love this. I love the commentary behind this because there's definitely social commentary behind this that, I mean, you could ignore if you want. But honestly, I think you're doing yourself and the film a disservice if you were to ignore it. Um, I love what this film has to say. Um, I love what it says about creation and about society and about what we you know what we consider life how we give life how we take life what we do with life um how we treat women in society like there's so many layers to this movie and it's gonna be something that um i hope this ends up on criterion i really do because i would buy the shit out of this on criterion um but i will be buying this this is a, a day one buy out the box no questions asked um i I rarely say this, but I not just adore this movie, but I have adoration for it. Um, I love this movie. This is going to be one of those movies that I understand some people will not like it. Um, this will be too weird for some people. Um, that's fine. Uh, more for me. <laughs> um, I love this movie. I, I truly love this movie. This is a fan-fucking-tastic to the highest degree. I cannot talk enough about the direction, um, the set design. I didn't even mention the set design. Oh my god! So there are, there's a point where uh, Bella's on a boat and she's looking up at the sky, and, and and it looks like a picture book. It looks like a literal breathing picture book. It it's so gorgeous, and um, the boat itself looks so fucking cool. It's very Wes Anderson esque in that way, but like the sets look so cool, and I, I yeah. Oh my god! In the music, it sounds like the instruments are like dying which works so well for, you know, Bella and given her origin. Like, there's so much about this film that just, it's so rare for a film, the sum of its parts, to connect like this, where it feels like everything is working in tandem. That is poor things. It is everything working in tandem to create an absolute masterpiece. Um, please watch this movie. You will not regret it. I, I love this movie. I fucking love this movie. Um, yeah, love it. Watch it as soon as you can. Uh, poor Things 
have y'all seen it? What'd you think of it? Let us know in the comments. Uh, you can follow us. Uh, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe, please. You can find us on YouTube. Just search The Real Pineapple. You can find me on Blue Sky at Real Pineapple, R E E L Pineapple dot B Sky dot social. Got a question for the show? Have a review request? Shoot me an email at jhunter at the real pineapple dot com. You can follow me on TikTok at uh, jhunter real pineapple, as well as on, uh, oh my gosh, Instagram. There you go. At uh, the real pineapple or, or at jhunter real pineapple. And you can follow me on Letterboxd at Black Shazam. And follow me on Twitch. I am hopping on Twitch finally. I'm really excited to get on Twitch, actually. Um, I'm going to be on Twitch uh, the 29th. Uh, that's a Monday, since it's upcoming Monday. Uh, I'll be doing my honorable mentions for my best of and worst of. That will be at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time slash 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, again, that's Monday the 29th. And then I will be doing my official top 10 best of worst of on saturday february 3rd at 5 p.m eastern standard time uh, 2 p.m pacific i'm really excited to bring both the streams to y'all and i'm still figuring out what my weekly uh stream schedule is going to be but i will be hopping on twitch uh twitch and youtube at least once a week to talk to y'all so really excited to get there but everyone thank you so much for listening stay safe take care of each other Get your COVID shot. Get your flu shot. Um, if you're down in Texas, I know it's really cold down there. Please stay warm and uh, help each other out uh, where you can. But never forget, as always, to keep it real.